the session is going to be very straightforward. It's about the program that we'll talk about uh, for the first 15, 20 minutes, and then we'll straight away jump into your questions. Now, you may be in the process of filling out an application. You may be exploring the program or you may be admitted. The best way to ask questions is just to put it in the chat and we will cover all the questions that come along the way. So let me start sharing my screen and. As I said, the first 15, 20 minutes is about the program. So the business analytics program at UT Dallas has been in existence for about, I would say, eight years now. We started in the fall of 2014. Right now, as an on-campus program, we are the largest program in the United States, and there are tons of benefits being that, and we'll go through those in the next few minutes. But to the audience like yourself who's contemplating or is has probably made up your mind about a degree in business analytics, the question that it still begs is, why would somebody like you want to pursue a degree in business analytics? Or for that matter, let's take a step back and ask the question, why, why do we need a degree in business analytics? I mean, don't we have enough majors out there that are there and you have all sorts of majors, right? Then why add another one in the ocean? And to answer that question, we'll have to really look at some of the historical facts. You know, the 70s and the 80s was when computers really became an integral part of a lot of enterprises. You know, they started getting into our homes. You know, personal computing was something that happened in that era. And any software, any application that was created, the only reason it was created was to manage data. So data has always been the underlying reason why these applications exist. Data management. Now, what the 70s and the 80s produced was the need for having these softwares and solutions in place. But as we moved forward in the 90s or late 80s, the question was that we have so much data that is lying with us. What do we do with it? And that's where some of the leaders in the market, they started talking about how do we go about some, some kind of pattern detection or some kind of analysis as to what we did well, what we didn't do well, and are there any patterns that we can detect and kind of act upon them so that we don't fall into the same holes in the future. But even though these conversations were going on, it wasn't until I would say the first 10 years of 2000 that people really started looking at analytics very seriously. Now, whenever there is a need in the industry, the first thing they do is they try to get trainers, try to train their employees, but the need, the speed at which the need was growing and the speed at which it was, be, people were being trained, they were very different. And that's where the industry looked at the academia that can we develop programs that send out practitioners into the market all trained and ready for these kind of roles. And that's where business analytics programs came into picture. I mean, the first business analytics degree program or something that resembled a business analytics degree only showed up in the year 2007. So from a discipline standpoint, from a degree standpoint, it's not a very old discipline, yet the hottest degree in the market right now. Why I say that is because from a point of view of longevity, you know, over a period of time, any technical degree depending on how many years of experience you have, might start evolving very differently for you. So for example, if, if you want to become a developer, having somebody do the same development that some, you know, with 10 years of experience versus somebody who's just fresh in the market or has a few years of experience, it makes more sense to have the person with less experience if it's the same amount of work to do that because both the resources will cost differently. Whereas the one who's more experienced can manage other elements of the organization. So there, but when we think about how long we will need this degree in our job, the answer is the need will never stop because this area is growing so rapidly. I mean, some of the courses that we teach, we don't even have examples from five years ago because it did not exist then. So whether it is the tech sector or it is the you know the non 
tech, the traditional industries, you know, healthcare, oil and natural gas, uh, real estate, wherever there is data that is being generated or being used, you will see a need for analytics. And that's what is the coolest thing about analytics, that in terms of the applicability, you don't really have to find a job in only a certain sector because that's where your degree will be applicable. It's anywhere and everywhere. The good thing is, and for this good thing is for people who are seeking a degree in analytics, is even though there is a lot of need out there, there is dearth of qualified professionals. As a matter of fact, a lot of companies feel they are doing analytics while they are not. So this degree somewhere helps with that. Now, some of the guiding themes that drive us, one is the flexibility, which means that it's a 36 credit hour program. How do you take your courses? In what order you take your courses? Which ones are more important to you that you want to start with? Which ones are need to be done later? You decide that. How many classes you want to take in a semester? You decide that. The earliest this degree can be done is nine months. The maximum time you have is 72 months. You decide that. You want to do this part time, full time. You decide that you want to take a class in the morning or the evening. You decide that. So there's a lot of flexibility in terms of how you want to tailor this experience for yourself. At the same time, engagement is another key need. And why I call it a key need is because, yes, you're doing a lot of things in your classrooms, but a lot of learning, especially in, and we are housed in the business school, a lot of learning happens outside of the classrooms as well. We make sure that you have ample opportunities to meet, have face time with executives from the industry. We make sure that you have enough time to work on you know, group projects or, or uh, competitions or additional you know, student organization activities that are happening, and they are really high quality activities that they do. We want to make sure that you have ample opportunities. A lot of times our students come back and say that there is too much happening and they don't know how to pick and choose, which is actually a good problem to have as opposed to there's nothing happening and we don't know whether we'll get any experience or not. We're also very focused on outcomes. When we do stuff, we analyze what was the outcome of what we did, whether it was an event, whether it was a job fair, whether it was another training activity, whether it is our classes. We want to see what is working and what's not working because we want to make sure that your experience is solid in terms of when you get this degree. As I mentioned, it's a 36 credit hour program. So 12 courses of three credits each. Half of the degree is core classes. The remaining half is electives. The six electives can be picked up from any of these 10 tracks in the flex program. Accounting analytics, cybersecurity, data engineering, data science, decision operation analytics, financial analytics, healthcare, marketing, social media, or enterprise systems, which is start using SAP. It's a STEM designated program. So if your employer is looking for those hardcore STEM skills, this is a STEM program. We allow people to come in all three semesters, fall being our largest intake, then spring, and then a handful come in summer as well. It is the largest in the country in terms of the a business analytics program and on-campus business analytics program. Irrespective of what experience you have, the average starting salary is 100K. But in that ballpark range, and we are just seeing that number getting pushed further. Uh, we have partnerships of dozens of partnerships with dozens of companies. And when I say partnerships, these partnerships are not like, oh, we just introduced, uh, got introduced on the email and that's it. No, we work together. We work on their projects. We work on their problems. They come and you know they judge our competitions. They serve on our, on our advisory boards. They do fundraising for us. So there is an intensive relation that we have with these organizations that help our students. Our students don't have to really go out and search for them. They come to the campus and they invest their time, energy, efforts, their resources to come in and be part of your learning experience. UT Dallas is ranked number one in the state of Texas on the ROI. And our program is highest in terms of those 
programs where the return on investment is the highest. Now, any financial institution will give you anywhere between say seven to 20 years worth of time to pay off your loans. If you let's say you take an education loan for the entire uh, tu tuition that is out there. Our students are paying it back in about two to three years. And that's only possible because they are making that kind of money. They're comfortably taking care of their families. They are living a comfortable lifestyle. They're doing everything plus paying off their debt, which takes on an average two to three years. Almost 600 internships were pursued in the last year, and this is something that has happened for several years as we go back. The average pay used to be about $24, $23, got bumped to $30 in the last year. The market has been good, and there is there's more acceptance for our students. There are three formats here. The flex program is what we are talking about right now, but we also have the cohort and online. Cohort is also another on campus program, uh, has two tracks, data science and accounting analytics. You know, most of the classes, again, in the flex and the cohort, they are face to face. I would say 85, 15 would be a good, 80, 20 would be a good percentage. Uh, the flex program is state funded, which means that as you take more credits, the per credit hour rate goes down whereas the cohort has a flat fee. Uh, in cohort, most of the students, they take the same set of classes together, whereas in flex, you can mix and match between you know, how you want to go about it. So it's not like that you take all the classes together in the flex program. As I said, it's your decision how you want to do that. There is some flexibility in the cohort, but most of the students end up taking the same set of courses together. And then we have a 100% online program as well, which focuses on data science and data engineering related tracks. And if if you're somebody who wants to have 100% online experience to want to come, out, come to campus, have a job, you want to have better handle of time, that's the program for you. We do have scholarships available for uh, the FLEX program. The deadline for fall has passed, but if you're looking for an admin beyond fall, yes, the scholarships are still available. Now, the if you plan to go for the online program, we do have scholarships still available for the fall semester. Now, having said that, just because we don't have any scholarships right now for the flex program because the deadline was May 1st, it doesn't mean that we cannot accept your application. If you're thinking of starting in fall of 22, we will still accept your application. There will be a late fee of $75, but we can definitely review your app. Which takes me to the application requirements. The GRE GMAT is one of the components, but you can always request a waiver. You can submit an application and send an email to jsomgradvising at utdallas.edu after your application is submitted, and you can uh, request a waiver. What we do is we look at your undergraduate transcripts and we kind of look at some of the corn courses to make a determination whether if you had to write the GRE or the GMAT, would you have been successful in that? And based on that, we'll give you a waiver. It takes about a week or 10 days. Transcripts, unofficial ones are OK for us till the time we have to make the decision. But once the decision is made and if you are admitted, then we will request you to submit uh, official ones. We need a resume. We need three letters of recommendation. And out of the three, one can be from a person. One needs to be from a person who is a professional. Now, this person may have worked with you, may not have worked with you. That's OK. The person should be a working professional right now. We also need a personal objective statement, which is like an essay. One page, double spaced. Just tell us why you want to do this degree. That's what, what, what we want to hear. There is no application fee waiver unless you pursued a degree before with us or you're a current student in some other degree program. That's when you get the application fee waiver. We have the applicant, the scholarships for uh, spring of 23 are available, and their uh, deadline. And this is this. I'm sorry, this is for fall, but for spring, the deadline is October 1st. So if you are planning to apply for spring 23 and you want to apply for scholarships. 
uh, October 1st is the deadline. Now, don't wait until the last minute. Somewhere in July, the application portal for uh, the spring application, the spring scholarships will open. Just go ahead, submit your application there. We will definitely need your GRE or GMAT scores, the official ones to reach us before we even look at your scholarship application. Uh, there are two components to it, the scholarship essay and your official scores. Both of them should reach us uh, by October 1st, but the earlier the better, because in the early phases, there is a high chance that, you know, if you are even somewhere close to what our competitive profile is, you might end up getting it. TA ships are not available in the first semester, but they are available from the second semester. And the reason is because we want you to be at UT Dallas for at least one semester. Take those courses for which you'll be assigned as a TA. You know, the minimum GPA that we look at is 3.4, and you should at least have an A in the course that we are going to assign you as a TA for, and then we go from there. You know, we review your application. But TA ships are not available in the very first semester at UT Dallas. Just some few numbers. They said 500 to 600 internships are pursued every year. And if you can see, the internet and software industry, so IT industry, is only one less than one fourth of what the total number of uh, internships were. So, which tells you that there is a lot of demand for analytics students across the different domains. The other number that I like is, you know, almost 350 plus employers where our students went and did these internships. Now, last year, a lot of stuff was remote, but despite that, our students were there in most of the states doing internships. As travel, traveling or working in person becomes normal, you know, we'll go back to seeing students in all the 50 states, which generally was the trend before COVID hit. Some average numbers, you know, last year, as I said, we, we used to be around $22, $23 as of last summer, and we are compiling the numbers for this uh, past year, but as of last summer, we were at about $26 an hour, the maximum going all the way up to $105 an hour. And as of this current semester, so the past spring of 22, we were very close to $30 an hour for an, an internship. Now the, the ratio between the internship pay rate and the full-time pay rate is about one is to two. So you get one dollar as an intern, two dollars is as a full-timer. That's the average that we have seen, and this is in line with it, because thirty dollars an hour means if you were working in the same position as a full-timer, it would be about sixty, which is like one hundred and twenty k, which is in line with what our averages look like. However, the hundred k that I talked about was the average. People with experience, you know. We're seeing them go in the range of 250 to 300K as well. That's our top end number that we have been seeing. There are a lot of great uh, internship stories, experiences, what people are doing in the program on LinkedIn. Hashtag UTD MSBA. Go ahead, look for those experiences. Read them yourself. What students are doing in these different organizations. These are some great reads. Let's say you want to work at a, at a company and you want to know what it what it is like to do there. This is a great way for you to, to go and read it yourself. These are unmoderated posts, first-hand accounts of our students, whether they are working, they are interning, they are doing class projects, they are wherever they are. This is a, a great read, so I would strongly recommend. MSBS student organizations, now there are, I would say, close to 350 student organizations in uh, UT Dallas. Out of that, about 20% of them, 70 of them are in the School of Management, but the ones that you see listed are the prominent ones where we see our students as, as leaders. So SAP Users Group, Salesforce, Project Management Club, Women in Technology, Intelligence Analytics Society, Marketing Analytics Club, Envision, Toastmasters, Cybersecurity, you name it, our students are leading these organizations, and this is just a very small subset of the ones that they're engaged in. Now, this is the piece where I feel that you get the best return on your investment. We have bonus certificate programs that are carved out of our degree program, and all you have to do is just take the courses related to those 
uh, certificate programs. And what you end up doing is you end up getting an additional diploma from UT Dallas. Now, somebody could have come in into UTD, and let's just take an example here. Applied Machine Learning Certificate has four courses. Depending on your residency, it can cost you anywhere between 12 to 20K. What do you need to do to pass and get this certificate is just take those courses, get a 3.0 average, and you're good. As a degree-seeking student, the same courses will apply to your degree program as well. And all you have to do is just take those courses, get that average 3.0, the average B grade, and you get this additional diploma for free. There is no additional tuition as associated with this because you've already paid it once. Our contact details. So on this call, I also have my colleague who's the program manager for business analytics, Sivya Leventhal. These are our email addresses and our direct phone lines for you all. Uh, before we get on with questions, I would just quickly jump on to our catalog page just to show you some of the courses that we have. So the core classes, the 18 credits, it's a blend of you know, statistics, predictive analytics, prescriptive analytics, a database class, foundations in business analytics, and then econometrics. This core is created in this way so that when you go out and work in any job, in any position that requires analytics, you can very confidently work as an independent contributor. And then the rest of the tracks that you can see, like there are some 80 odd courses from which you have to pick like six. And all these choices are available for you. You don't have to declare any track. You want to go ahead and take a course from uh, any of these tracks, you go ahead and do that yourself. You can take all the six electives from one track. You can take one course each from six different tracks. That's up to you how you want to do it. But you have that option to make it work for yourself. That's the flexibility that we were talking about. OK, at this point of time, let's uh, jump into the questions right here. And if you have any questions, please just put them in the chat. I will take them one at a time. OK. All right, the first, uh, the scholarships of cohort program is still available. You'll have to contact the cohort program for that. You know, I can give you information about the flex and online, but cohort you'll have to. They tend to follow our cycles, but please reach out to cohort MS Boan cohort at utdallas.edu. Ria, can I defer my scholarship from spring to fall if I get it? You can't defer a scholarship. You can defer your admit, and you can request to deferral by a year. You know, you can defer it to the next semester or up to one academic year. But if you got a scholarship, the scholarship won't be deferred. You'll have to apply again. You may get it, you may not get it. And there have been chances where students did not get it the second time because here is the thing. There is no one criteria for what will work out for a scholarship recipient. It all depends on the pool. If the pool gets competitive and you lose your competitiveness just because you defer to a more competitive uh, intake, uh, that will hurt your chances to get a scholarship. So you want to defer, you can do that, but there is always a risk if you have the scholarship. Now, if you don't have a scholarship and you're just deferring so that you can get another chance to get a scholarship, there's again no guarantee that you will get it. My advice would be if you've decided to come to UT Dallas in a certain semester, just come to UT Dallas because a lot of our good students didn't start with scholarships. And to be honest, there are TA ships, there are continuing uh, scholarships for students. There are lots of great internships. I mean, at the end of the day, what you need is financial support, and there are multiple methods to which you can support your education. In fact, we did a webinar in January about financial planning, and that webinar was all about, uh, you know, uh, what are the different ways through which you can sustain your education at UTD? And I would say that, you know, uh, we will post the link in the chat in a few minutes, but I would recommend watching that webinar because that webinar will give you a lot of insights as to how 
people support their uh, their uh, experience here, their degree when they are here at UT Dallas. OK, Mostafa, does the university place student for internships or do? Oh, that's a good question. Now, again, the way it works is it's a shared responsibility. We reach out to a lot of employers, and when I say a lot of employers, there are 1500 of them. We have strong relationships with a lot of employers who always come and ask for resources and we kind of help them with that as well. We've been hosting a lot of employers. In fact, the last few weeks we had. Several employers come every week and in every round that they came, they went back with some interns that they uh, wanted to hire. So definitely the school helps. Uh, the school does their career fair. The university does their career fair. The program by itself. We do a lot of things to help you place. However, at the same time, you also apply on your own. So between your efforts and our efforts, something will work out and we will end up with those internships that you're looking for. Swatika, can I defer my application from fall to spring? What is the process? Well, there is a deferral form that you will have to fill out. If you just uh, Google defer admission UTD, it's the first or the second link and you can defer it. Uh, Manju, while looking in the admissions requirements, there is a requirement for TOEFL. Is it? It means IELTS will not be accepted. Now we accept IELTS, we accept TOEFL, we accept Duolingo. However, there are about I think it's 46 countries that have been waived off. If you look at the English proficiency of UT Dallas, and you are from one of those 46 countries, if you did your undergrad degree in one of those 46 countries, you are given an automatic waiver for English proficiency. Rohan, are we guaranteed places on the certificate if you want the ML? Are we guaranteed places on the course as well? Again, every student gets a chance to go for those courses. You know, we don't guarantee anything because honestly, you are in the degree program. Those courses are part of the degree program. So should we guarantee a place in those courses? The right way to look at it is it's not a guarantee, but what we do is uh, I'll take an example. So. Machine learning, for example, you know, a lot of course students want to go for it. And you know, the course that we open, it got filled. You know, people are on the wait list. We're going to open another section. You know, we have the resources to open another section. We will go ahead and do that. So we try to provision that for you. If you are in the certificate program or the degree program, the courses will be made available to you. But uh, if I put it in this way that, oh, because you are a certificate seeking student, you must get it. That's not the thing now. Having said that, let's say you are in the certificate program. And you have to take certain courses and for whatever reason, if that course is not available, we will try to evaluate. Is there another course that can give you the same skill set, the same knowledge? And can we substitute that's on a case to case basis that we look at, but mostly uh, courses that are part of our certificates or you know some of our popular courses, we try to Make sure that uh, during the degree program you end up getting it. Now, if you are stuck on the thing that oh, I must take this course in only this semester and nowhere else, now that's not a good way of planning your degree. You have to be flexible in terms of OK, if I don't get it this semester, maybe I'll take it in the next semester and I might take some other course. So you have to be ready for that kind of flexibility. But over a period of 36 credits, our students end up getting everything that they, they want to take, to be very honest. Abhishek, can a flex? Can the flex help me become a business consultant? How can one personalize the program according with their being guidance? Now, when you say business consultant, the question is what kind of business consultant are you? Now we are in the business school. All our students have the ability to understand what businesses want, what companies want, and they have also the know how of the technologies associated in building those solutions. They are a lot of times integrators. They are the ones who talk both to both sides of the people and and bring those people together or to craft those solutions. So definitely the, the classes that are built are built in a way that they help you think critically. Now you could be somebody who just wants to do the assignments and be done with it, or you could be somebody who's very engaged in the class, works on the uh, the different projects that are given, you know, is is trying to participate in in competitions and is trying to help yourself by applying that knowledge in these different places to help become a business consultant. There's no book that I can go and give to you and say, hey, read this book and you'll become a business consultant. There's a lot of 
experience based learning that happens. Now, UT Dallas, we do that in the program. We make sure that you have those opportunities to do experience based learning, but eventually the the uh, onus somewhere lies on you that how do you absorb it? And of course, we have had we have students come to us all the time asking about how they can better navigate some of these things. So yes, we do help in uh, in crafting that journey to become whatever you want to become for that matter, not just a business consultant. Divya, how many days does it take to get I-20? Well, if all the documents are received correctly, it takes seven to 10 business days. There's also a business uh, analytics track in the management science program. Is it the same or how is it different? Well, the management science programs track. Now, for example, we have, uh, I'll take an example of one of our tracks, financial analytics. The goal of the business analytics program is that we will help you stay focused on analytics. Anything that you do is focused on analytics. Any other degree program that may have a track where there are a few courses will give you a little bit of flavor. OK, but there will be other requirements of the program. So a student who wants to get into a, a role, a job, a career, that is built on analytics or is very focused on analytics, the best bet for them is the business analytics program. Because to be very honest, there is a lot to learn around analytics if you really want to be that specialized practitioner. You can take other degree programs and then just take three or four courses and feel that you have the flavor. Having the flavor versus having a very in-depth skill set are two different things. And the business analytics program is the only program will, which will give you the the, the breadth as well as the depth in the best way possible when it comes to analytics. Can I work from home in the US for an interval while studying for my degree? Well, while you're in the US, you cannot work for anybody. Anywhere, unless you are authorized by the school to do that. Now, if you want to continue working for an employer anywhere and you can stay in your home country, you can do the program online. You, you will not come to the US. You can still do the program and you can still work for the employer. But once you're in the US, if you're an international student, you're bound by the uh, the labor laws here and which tells that you cannot get into any employment that is not approved by the program. Shivam, what is the total strength uh, of the program? So, well, we see anywhere between 350, 400 students that come in the fall semester. Uh, and, and again, that it's not like all 400 sit in the same class. Every section has about, if it's a core class, there'll be 50 to 60 students. If it's an elective, anywhere between 20 and I would say 50, depending on how popular the elective is. But uh, the, all the courses that I showed you, we cannot offer all these courses if we didn't have big batches. When I look at some of our competitors, they have very small programs, like 40, 50 students in a class, and that's why they hardly have any electives. It's the same set of courses which every student has to just choose because the, there actually isn't any much choice. Here we are giving you, you know, for every course that you are choosing, you have like 70, 80 choices th that are out there. Uh, thank you, Sivi, for posting both those links uh, in the chat. Monica, do we need to send the official transcripts before applying for I-20? No, official transcripts are not required for I-20. Uh, I-20 process and your official transcript, they are separate processes, so they're not dependent on one another. I would be applying for fall 23. Should I begin for application or wait for a few months? Well, Anju, you can start applying. And again, as soon as you put in the application, uh, you know, our scholarship portal will open for fall 23, somewhere close to November. I would say have your application put in because early applicants of whether it is for the admit or for these scholarships, they have a benefit. They have an edge over the rest. See, as we get close to deadlines, there are fewer people that we can take. So it's always better to apply as early as possible. Now, for the admit, we do have a lot of flexibility. Even you apply, even if you apply late, we are good. We can still evaluate your application. And if you're a good candidate, we can uh, admit you. But in terms of scholarships, if you wait until the deadline, you know the number of scholarships are always limited, and that is true for any institution for that matter. So always do it as early as you can. 
Can I submit uh, the transcripts in person? Yeah, you can do that. The only risk you run is in case they are not in the right form. So make sure they are attested. They are in envelopes that are sealed and the seals are stamped. If all that is there, you can drop them off in person. But if you have the ability to just mail them to UT Dallas, do that because in case, you know, 1% chance that they're not in an acceptable state, um, you will have a, you know, a tough time to get them again. But yeah, you can drop it. If that's the answer you're looking for. Monica, email address for sending official transcript not mentioned. It's admission at utdallas.edu. A singular word, admission at utdallas.edu. Uh, so can you please speak into the requirements for admissions for international VSC in finance, but current US residents, GMIGRE. Well, it's the same. Send me. You, whether you did your degree internationally or you did it in the US, you, and we do accept three year degrees, by the way. So if you had that, just simply apply. The GMAT, GRE, all those waiver policies are the same. We will look at your undergrad uh, degree, uh, your transcript, and make a determination on the basis of that. We don't offer GRE, GMAT waivers based on experience. And the reason is because, see, experience cannot really help us quantify what you have done. I mean, two people can have the same experience, let's say, both of you have five years of experience or 10 years of experience. The your knowledge or your skill set cannot be compared just because you have spent the same time in the industry. Uh, what are some of the historical companies that hire? Well, we do have all the consulting companies, the big four, you know, Amazon, Facebook, Microsoft, uh, Tesla. These are some of the ones that are coming up big time. Ericsson has been a long time friend of the program. Uh, I'm just thinking TI, uh, Toyota, McKesson. In fact, if you go to our website, we actually publish what companies our students are interning at and also what titles they have in those companies, and we do that for even full-time hires. So there's a very comprehensive report. But as I said, 360 employers just for internships, there is a wide breadth of companies. And we are right in the dallas Fort Worth area. See, one of the best things about this location is it's not the east coast it's not the west coast it's better than both of those coasts because it's a mix of both of them you know you will look for any industry that you want to look for you will find that in the dallas fort worth area and a lot of headquarters are moving either in dfw dallas fort worth or you know within the periphery in the state of texas so austin san antonio houston are other hubs where all these companies are gravitating so honestly you don't have to travel too far to get a good job all these companies are coming in your neighborhood. Yes, yeah, I have enrolled to the course and yet my handshake declined, stating I have not officially enrolled. What should I do? Yes, yeah, if you are a fall 22 student, it will be only activated a few weeks before the start of classes. It, to be honest, it makes no sense for us to activate handshake for people who are starting in fall because you technically have not really started the program, even though you are enrolled. And we always do that a few weeks before the start of classes. Can you please talk about dual degree opportunity? How does it work? Can we do MBA part time while working? So Abhishek, any degree at UT Dallas needs to be completed in 72 months. Now MBA is a 53 credit degree. MBA MS is a 36. Individually, they are a total of 89. But when you do it as a dual degree, it is 63 credits. So you save 27 credits worth of time and money. That's about a year, year and a half, depending on how fast you want to go. So you can, uh, I, I, I'm not sure what your um, work authorization or eligibility is, but if you are uh, a domestic resident or a USPR, whatever it is, and you don't have any work or visa restrictions, yes, absolutely, you can do your MBA part time. It has to be finished in all the courses that are related to MBA have to be finished in 72 months. However, if you are an international student, then you must complete both those degrees before you graduate. But to be honest, I personally feel even if you are just a student who's seeking a master's degree and you want to add an MBA, it's just another 27 credits, another year of time, but you have an MBA as well in the bag. You may not use it immediately. You may use it immediately, but 
if you're moving into an executive position in the future and your company wants you to have that MBA, you know, while you were here doing one degree, you got the second one as well for a very attractive price and in a very short amount of time. You don't have to do all the 53 credits. 27 was enough. Um, Mihir Modi, we received a three year I-20. Could you please tell us and DS1 what needs to fix since the. So Mihir, the I-20 duration is standard. OK, it is when it says three years, you know that the program can actually go all the way up to six years. The max is six years. Most of the students do it in one and a half to two years. The I-20 duration is two. Uh, is, sorry, is three years, so don't worry about that. That is a standard that doesn't change for any of the degree programs. And if you've been asked what's the duration, just think about how much time you're going to spend on your program. I don't say that the duration of the MSBA Flex program is two years. It is not. It can be done as quickly as possible in uh, like nine months. If you're an international student, it'll take you 12 months because of the professional development course that's out there. But uh, nine months to 72 months is the thing. Most what I say is on an average, most of the students finish it in one and a half to two years. Samantha, for TA, RA, role criteria based on performance or UTD, even prior experience, we don't look at prior experience, to be honest. In most of the cases, we don't look at prior experience because, uh, you know, it's good to have that experience, but what we really want from you is what you have done at UTD because that's why you're being hired in that position. That's why we want you to take those courses before you, we hire you as a TA. So we might look at your prior experience, only in very specialized cases. So for example, let's say I'm hiring you for a, a brand new course that is coming up and you know nobody has ever taken it. At that point of time, you might want to look at prior experiences, but those cases are rare. What are the math and program computer programming prereqs? So you need to have calculus in your undergrad. If you have not done that, we will uh, put a program prereq on your account, which means you have to complete uh, a course on calculus in the first semester. It will not be counted as part of your 36 credits because it's a program prereq. We also have a program prereq of a professional development class for one credit. Now you can waive that off if you've had US experience or you've worked in the US for at least two years and there are a few other related uh, points. If you meet that, though, any of those criteria, you can get that waived. But if not, let's say you're an international student, you will have to take that. Any program prereq is listed on your admit. If it is not listed on your admit, you don't have to take it. Does the MSBA program have experiential learning or co-op? You know, co-op internships is all the same. Our students work and they take classes at the same time. You know, these terms used to have separate meanings long ago, but now no longer. Like the, the whole concept about summer internships, okay? Well, there are summer internships, there are fall internships, there are spring internships. People are hiring all, all year long. So yes, and as I said, every student ends up uh, getting an internship. You know, 80% of them definitely pursue at least one internship. So you do have a lot of opportunities to work and take classes at the same time. Will the recording of this video shared? Yes, we will have this put on our the Jindal Schools YouTube channel, and from there, you know, you can access it. Or any recording of our webinars is posted there. Uh, Mithilesh, when are we supposed to complete the one-hour professional? That has to be done in the first semester. Your admit will state that as well, that you must complete it in your first semester. Monica, my passport has been renewed recently. Where and how can I send a copy of the new passport to the university, especially for I-20? I've already filled it. Send it to ISSO, ISSO prospective at utdallas.edu. Or if you've already sent in the application, you know how to work around the iComet portal. You can send it through there as well. Um, your admission forms folder in Orion is another place where you can add a, a copy of your new passport. But uh, ISSO prospective at utdallas.edu is a good place to start with. Uh, Tanya, is it possible to make a shift to the MBA, MSBA dual degree from the MSBA? Yes, you can do that. You can uh, reach out to advising in the first semester and just talk to them about adding the MBA and they will help you with that. 
Keith, now is this program suitable for commerce graduates looking for to transition into? Uh, will the course be taught the basics? Oh, absolutely. Any background that you have is idle for this, and the reason is because data is the common factor. It's the universal common denominator. Anyway, in fact, some of our very good students are people who don't have any IT or CS experience. The reason is they have this feeling that they have to put more effort to, you know, catch up with the rest and they end up getting better results. Not saying that people with experience in IT CS don't do well, they do very well, but uh, people who come from non traditional IT computer science backgrounds do very well. And since you're from a commerce background, you will see a lot of things that you probably learned as principles or theories. How are they applied? See, the, this degree is very applied in that nature. Now, having said that, there are foundational courses, but remember, this is a master's program. You know, the, uh, things will be taught from the foundation, but you are expected to have a have, you know, to have that ability to pick up on the speed. Now we do provide supplementary help. We have boot camps. We have student organizations that are very focused on providing you these trainings, tutoring, around stuff. You know, your peers are there to help you learn stuff. So there are there is a lot of help around. The more you put into this, the better you will get, and that's the way I would put it in the simplest way possible. Um, CV, thank you again for the YouTube channel there. Samantha, I'm planning to take data science track for masters. Which certificate courses are possible where I can take? Well, uh, the machine learning certificate is one that you should definitely go for. And as I said, uh, depending on your residency, if you are a Texas resident, about twelve thousand dollars. If you're a non-Texas resident or an international student, that certificate is worth twenty thousand dollars. It's twenty thousand dollars of free money. Don't miss it. When you come here, apply for it in your first semester, and you should be good. And again, because you by the time you come here and you apply for it, you'll be a current student. Guess what? You will not have to pay the application fee. That's where you get your waiver. Um, so I think I'm residing in Plano. Is it possible to meet you? Absolutely. Please be our guest. Uh, this week we have so uh, next week we have our graduation and all, but the week of 23rd onwards, if you want to send me an email, you know, I'll be more than happy to schedule some time and, and we can meet in person. We would love to do that. Anju, I'm getting confused when I apply. I'll be giving IELTS in a month uh, time. OK, if I don't have IELTS to go at that moment, can I apply? Yes, you can. On the application, they do ask you what test are you going for, and you can select IELTS from the list. And if you are appearing in the future, you can always mention that date and move on in the application. But as I said, please do check the English proficiency. I'm going to. Put that list here, English proficiency UTD. If you are, if you did your undergrad degree in any of those countries that are listed on this list, and I'm putting it right away. You are not required to give IELTS or any of the English proficiency tests. Uh, Mithilesh, any, uh, when are we supposed to attend the graduate student orientation international as mentioned in the advert email? OK, well, keep an eye on your email because those dates are being sent out to students. And in fact, I believe. Uh, let me just. Double check it quickly. Uh, the dates for the fall 22 orientations should be out. Yes, I guess they are out. Yes, they are out, so I'm putting it here in the chat. And you can go from, you know, you can do this in person, you can do this online. Shivani, I'm interested in the data science. What all electives am I supposed to take? I want to become a data scientist. So again, Shivani, based on, as you, since you said data scientist, you know, courses around machine learning, natural language processing, deep learning, a bit of RPA, all those stuff will help you. Just the stats. So again, our core classes, stats, econometrics, you know, predictive prescriptive analytics, all of that will help you towards building your skill set around uh, data science. So definitely. And the Flex program has a lot of different ways through which you can carve that journey. You know, one of the good things our students do once they come here is they, they talk to people who are in these roles. They get to have that first hand perspective, and that kind of helps them in knowing what kind of courses they need to take so that they have the skills. 
So definitely, you want to be a data scientist. We have a lot of people who are getting into data science and becoming data scientists. Do apply for the Flex program, and you know you'll have a lot of options there to do this. Um, Swatika, you are welcome. Uh, Fanindra, I've completed my MBA in finance. Am I eligible for a master's? Yes, because it's an MBA in finance. The only uh, thing is if you have done something which is like you can't do a master's in business analytics or data science and then come again and do that. Same, but MBA in finance, absolutely. You can do uh, a master's in business analytics, no problem. Divya, I have a visa interview on 22nd May. Can my I-20 be released soon? Where should I send an email? ISSO prospective at UT Dallas. It is, uh, I still see that there is time, so don't worry. You should get it. 7 to 10 business days is what they take, and they do give you your I-20 by the 10th business day. It's business day, not calendar days. Remember that. Apart from UTD scholarships, does the UTD have financial aid like FAFSA? Absolutely, yes. Uh, send me if you qualify for that and you can directly reach out to the financial office thing. I'm just going to put that. UTD. Yes, you can absolutely go for FAFSA if you are uh, if you qualify. That is something that a lot of our students who are USPR and citizens they go for. Uh, Shivam, do we have flexibility to choose a particular coding language for MSBA courses? Now that's a good uh, question. We do have a lot of courses where we might give you some uh, options to do that. And, uh, you know, for example, business analytics, the foundational class is start using R and it's start using SAS. You know, our machine learning classes or data science classes, we have a mix of Python or R. We try to give you the best flavor possible. OK, but see, the goal for a degree program is not tools or languages. Yes, we have to use something to teach you that. But eventually the goal for us is that do you know the concepts? See, tomorrow the languages can change, the tools can change, but the concepts won't change. They will stay the way they are. So we make you, you know, effective in that. I mean, just to give an example, I teach a class on RPA, robotic process automation. I use certain tools. Now, if you know how to build it in one tool, you can obviously transfer to another one. Same with even databases. You're taught Databases using one particular language, your company works in some other thing. Yes, it's very easy for you to switch between the two. Uh, Shivani, yes, we are actually working on opening. Now, when you say data science electives, because see, most of the electives are advanced classes, so you should have taken prereqs before that. Now, if you're talking about the stats class, databases, etc or BA with our those kind of classes. Yes, we will be opening more sections. In fact, we just sent a request this morning to add some more. Manju, yes, as discussed before, there are graduate assistantships. We call them TAs, but they're not available for the first semester. You'll have to apply for them. You can do that in your first semester for a second semester TA ship. Double, can I take private student loan from US with US citizens? Because I know will it impact never? Again, if somebody is ready to sponsor you, why not? But you'll have to somewhere uh, tell them how this person is related to you, who's giving you the loan. To be honest, uh, we cannot really put a finger on what will work and what will not work, but it's not an unusual circumstance that you know somebody's getting a loan from a US course. Now, there are a lot of companies out here that our students take loan from where they give you the loans in the US and USD, but there is no cosigner there. Can we book an appointment for F1 visa? No, you need, I think you, you will need your CVS ID. So for that, that is only issued to you through an I-20. Manju, does that mean I have to apply after I get admitted and started my or I have to? OK, Manju, to be a graduate assistant, you will have to start your first semester. Once you have started your classes, then you can apply. For a TA ship. All right, we got another couple minutes. Feel free to send more questions in the chat. 
as I mentioned before, the recording will be available in the YouTube channel. OK, let me close it with some comments here then if there are no further questions. Uh, we do have OK, are seats allocated for elective courses on first come first? Uh, that's uh, exactly how it works out. OK, everybody gets a, an appointment to start enrolling in classes. And as you get closer to your graduation, you get priority in terms of those appointments. But let's say, you know, a class was a section was open and it got filled and you're on the wait list or. You know, you couldn't get enrolled, but you were on the wait list and somebody drops ahead of you. You can get enrolled. Um, there might be a chance that, you know, for a few weeks the class wasn't available and then people started dropping off because they started moving to other courses and there was a spot available and you can just get into that. So again, if it's available, first, first come first serve. For TA ship, no, it's not necessary to have a scholarship. In fact, we try to not give TA ship to the people who have a scholarship because you're already getting supported in some way and we try to ensure that, you know, we don't double dip on a student because the TA ship itself is benefit. It comes with benefits. A scholarship comes with benefits and we want to expand it to as many people as possible. <clears throat> so apart from the classes, we give you exp uh, access to data camp, Coursera. Um, there are some uh, partnerships that we have with uh, places like, you know, we had a low code citizen devel development program with Microsoft and PMI that we gave our students access to. You know, we recently introduced a tool where students can practice interviewing using uh, an AI based interviewing room. Uh, th those are some of the resources, but then the biggest resources we bring in these industry professionals into the school through our events, through our student organizations, whatnot, and that is the first hand experience that you get with these uh, companies. So that is very, uh, that's a valuable asset to have in the school. What do we look for a TA? Well, first of all, as I said, 3.4 and an A in the course that we are hiring you for, you should have that. And then we start reviewing. See, TA ship is not, it's not an academic award, it's a job. We want to make sure that you know your content well, but at the same time, you have the ability to manage 150 to 200 students along with a full time load that you may have taken as a TA. So we look at the overall candidature of a student before we pick up uh, TAs. What if uh, I'm on a wait list and it isn't confirmed? Now, yeah, if you're on the wait list and it's not confirmed, it's like, you know, booking a ticket for a, a plane, train, bus, whatever it is. If you're on the wait list, you're not confirmed, then you're not confirmed. And that's where what we do is we look at wait lists regularly. We, if there is a course where, you know, we have 20 spots on the wait list and all 20 are taken, that means it's a good candidate for another section. We might open a section. Let's say there are a couple of students who are hanging on the wait list and we have the ability to kind of let them uh, be in the class. We enroll them towards the end of the, you know, the duration when the wait list can be open. We do that as well. If we don't have the way to absorb anybody from the wait list, then we simply drop it. So till the time you're on the wait list, you're not guaranteed. You have to be enrolled in the class before uh, you can start off. OK, well, with that, we come to the end of all the questions and also our time here. Well, you have our email addresses. Feel free to send us any questions that you may have. I will also share the link to our uh, Telegram group where there's a lot of. Questions that are asked there as well. We try to make sure that they are answered as quickly as possible, and that's our way of staying connected with you. Uh, you know, a lot of applicants are there. A lot of current students are there, so. You get a lot of uh, good responses to your questions very quickly. Stay connected, but uh, any questions that you may have, just send it to us. We're excited with the, about the prospect that you chose UT Dallas and you will be here. If you're still contemplating and would like to have further conversations about this, still send us an email and we'll be more than happy to take that up. But for now, you have a great weekend, all of you, and we'll be in touch very soon. Bye-bye.